sequences are. Just, oh, oh, have you started? Okay. You, you guys learned what sequences are, just a list of numbers and or a list of things. That's a sequence, and they're actually in order, so they're an ordered list of numbers or things. That's a sequence. Well, now, with a series, we're going to be adding those things together, and um, we're going to just have to ask ourselves, hey, when I add up an infinite number of things that, that make a sequence, is my answer finite or infinite? And, and that's how uh, we're going to be deciding whether a series converges or diverges. So uh, let's go for it. OK. Um, if, if this list of terms, a sub n, is an infinite sequence, then this sum, as n goes from 0 to infinity of a sub n, which would be a naught plus a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus dot dot dot, is an infinite sequence series. So that's what we math teachers know. We make this distinction between sequences and series. The sequence is just the list of numbers. The series is what you get when you add them all together. And then these guys, your, your A0 and A1 and A2, we call them the terms of the series. Okay. And so the next question we ask is, does this series, this infinite series, add up to a finite number, or does it add up to infinity? If it adds up to infinity, then it's probably not going to end up being very useful to us. But if it adds up to a finite number, then it is useful to us. If the sum of a sub n adds to a finite number, it converges. And if that series either adds to infinity, if the a sub n either adds to infinity or doesn't add to a particular finite number, it diverges. Let's go ahead and look at, uh, you know, the most popular basic sequence, you know. If I had a sub n, that was 1 half comma 1 fourth comma 1 eighth comma, one sixteenth, comma, dot, 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 and it went on forever and ever and ever, then the series would be one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus dot, dot, dot. Tell me, does this series converge? Yes. Yeah, Achilles and the hair, you know? Yeah, in fact, what does it converge to? One. One, yeah. So we know this guy converges. We've seen this, you know, several times now. All righty. Well, one way that we know this converges is by looking at partial sums. This is something you can do quite often with your calculator or in your head. You can decide, okay, um, you know, I don't want to add an infinite, infinite number of terms, because that will take a really, really long time. So why not just add the first four terms, and the first five terms, and the first six terms, and just look at what those partial sums are giving me, and, and try to infer, like, do those partial sums seem, seem to converge to something? So, for example, if I looked at the first partial sum, that would be 1 half. 
and the second partial sum would be one half plus one fourth, which is three fourths. And the third partial sum would be one half plus one fourth plus one eighth, which ends up being seven eighths, right? And so what I'm looking at now is my partial sums. And you can think of the partial sums now as being a sequence. Where you're going, okay, this sequence of partial sums, does that appear to converge? You know, you look at the fourth partial sum and it's 15 sixteenths and the fifth partial sum and that's 31 30 seconds and the sixth partial sum and that's a 63 60 fourths. And, and at this point you're going, yeah, it, it looks like the sequence of partial sums it is converging, you know? And so this is something you can kind of do in your head to check something. Just look at the partial sums and see if they appear to converge. But, but it's interesting, most of the nuts and bolts of what we do in this class, we're not going to be looking at partial sums that much. We're actually just going to look at the series and, and just take the series on its own merits and decide if it converges or not. Okay? Um, just one second. Uh, All right, it is now time to teach you a few ways you can decide whether a series converges or diverges. The first way is called the nth term test for divergence. series a sub n is going to converge. If I've got a series and I want this guy to converge, what better be true about the terms themselves, the individual terms as I start getting closer and closer and closer to infinity? What better be true about the terms? Getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, good for you. They better be getting smaller and smaller. In fact, what number do had they better be getting closer and closer to? Zero. Yeah, zero, right? If if my seer, if my the terms of my series are converging to something other than zero, then there's no way that series can converge, right? Like if I gave you a series where the the terms are converging to one. So when you get to infinity, you're getting 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Well, there's no way that can converge, right? Because because we need we need it when you get to infinity for these subs, you know subsequent terms to here. Let me get back in the count. We need those subsequent terms to to be getting close to zero. So you're not adding to your sum. And so that's what the nth term test for divergence says. It says, hey, if the infinity of term is not zero, then there's no way your, se your series can converge. Okay. Let me put it down in words, okay? If, if the sequence, if the sequence a sub n does not converge to zero, then the series, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of a <coughs> sub n must diverge that's it, the nth term test for divergence So hey, let me give you some examples. The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2 to the n power. Does this guy converge or diverge? Good. How do you know it diverges? 
uh, the, the sequence of terms that you're adding, you know, this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus dot dot dot. You know, the infinity of term is not zero. In fact, it's infinity. Okay? And so if I wanted to state why, I'd say since the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n power is not equal to zero, the sum of 2 to the n as n goes from 0 to infinity diverges. And you can even say by the nth term test for divergence. One thing you should know about an exam that we're going to eventually have is that it's not enough for you to say if something converges or diverges. It's going to be incredibly important that you tell me the reason why it converges or diverges. So on a problem like this, if I ask you, does this converge or diverge, you're going to have to say it diverges due to the nth term test for divergence. Here, let me give you another one. B, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n factorial over 2n factorial plus 1. Please decide, does this diverge by the nth term test for divergence? Okay, what did you guys get? How many people say this converges? Okay, how many people say it diverges? Okay, no one says it diverges. Okay, what if I told you it diverged? I say you're crazy. Okay, well, hey, let's do this. What's the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n? What's that limit? When you plug in a big number like 10 or 100 or 1,000, what is this fraction becoming? One over that big number? No. The, the, first of all, are you okay that as n gets bigger and bigger, this one becomes insignificant? Yeah. And we can ignore it. It goes to insignificant land. Yeah. Okay? So what do the terms of this se sequence get closer and closer to as n gets bigger and bigger? Mm -hmm. A half, right? Which means initially, uh, you know, when I plug in a 1, I got 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 1 third. And when I plug in a 2, I got 2 over 5 and, you know, et cetera. But, but eventually, when I get to infinity, what am I adding over and over and over again? A half. I'm getting a half plus a half plus a half plus a half, right? So tell me, does this guy diverge? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. This infinityth term must be zero in order for this series to diverge, in series to converge. If this infinityth term is anything but zero, this guy's going to diverge for sure. Even if the infinityth term was 0. 0.00001, it wouldn't matter. If I'm adding an infinite number of those 0. 0.00001s, then it's going to have to diverge. So I'd say, yeah, I'd say diverge by the nth term test for divergence. Hey, yes? So if the series always has a limit, it's always going to end up diverging? If the series has a non-zero limit, it will always diverge. Yeah. Now, let me give you one that's a little bit tricky. How about this? As n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, can I say that this guy diverges by the nth term test for divergence?
What's the infinityth term? Zero. Good. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n is indeed 0. So I cannot use the nth term test for divergence because the infinity of the term is not zero. The nth term test by for divergence says if the sequence does not converge to zero, then the series must diverge. But does that mean that if the infinity of the term is zero, then guaranteed the series does converge? And the answer is no. No. The, this guy actually diverges. If you were to add this on your calculator and just add 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 7, you would never get any particular answer. Your answer would just get bigger and bigger and bigger because that series diverges. But I cannot use the nth term test for divergence, number one. And number two, just because the infinity of the term is zero doesn't mean it converges. But this doesn't mean. the series converges. So that's the freaky thing about the nth term test for divergence. It only demonstrates divergence. If your infinity of term is zero, then you're, you're dead in the water. You still don't know whether your series converges or diverges. But if the infinity of term isn't zero, then guarantee the series uh, diverges. Okay? just can't use nth term test for divergence. We don't get to use the nth term test if the nth term isn't non-zero. Here, like let me give you another example. D, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 thirds to the n power which would be like, you know, two-thirds plus four-nines plus eight-twenty-sevens plus da da da. Do I get to use the nth term test for divergence on D? Well, let's see what the infinity of term is. Which I, I guess I'll just put in, I, I'll put in actually that this is a two-thirds to the nth power. Okay, what's the infinity of term for two thirds to the nth power? Infinity. No. I mean, I got two to the n over three to the n. That's that's going to be. I mean, the de denominator is going to be infinitely bigger than the numerator, right? Three to the n power, you know, it's getting pretty big. I mean, three to the fifth power is is what two forty three, and two to the fifth power is only thirty two, and it just gets worse after that. So this gets to be zero. So do I get to use the nth term test for divergence? No, can't use it. I only get to use the nth term test for divergence if the infinity of term is non-zero. But in this case, uh, can't use nth term test. So we don't know. We don't know if it converges or diverges. Now, now between you and me, does this thing converge? Because um, yeah. what kind of series is that? We actually have a name for this type of series where you're multiplying each successive term by two thirds. What do we call that type of series? Arithmetic. Say again. Arithmetic. Nope, not arithmetic. Geometric. Yeah, geometric. This is a <laughs> geometric series, and what has to be true about my common ratio r for a geometric series to converge? Yeah, between negative one and positive one, right? So, so this guy, I don't get to use the nth term test, okay, except I observe that this is a geometric series, which we're going to talk about next. I'm not going to talk about telescoping series. We'll do that tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to have to take off a few of those problems. But, but the fact is, it's a converging geometric series. since r is between 1 and negative 1. So I get to say that this guy converges not by using the nth term test for divergence. I get to say it converges because it's a convergent geometric series. OK, 
Can I give you one more problem? And then I'm going to go to geometric series, which actually we've already talked about, so you should be good on that. But here, how about the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 1 over n plus 2? Please answer yes or no. Does this diverge by the nth term test for divergence, <coughs> or are we clueless? The old, key treasure the knowledge in your own heart. Just like the Virgin Mary did when she was told about the intended worth of Jesus. She treasured the knowledge in her heart. Yeah, me too. I, I would probably tell someone. I wouldn't just treasure the knowledge in my heart. And but I mean, I guess if the angel told me I had to, I guess I would. If I was convinced they were an angel. If I hadn't watched Game of Thrones, you know. Where every supernatural being seems malevolent. Okay, you guys ready? It's either a yes or no. How many people say this diverges because of the nth term test for divergence? Oh, many of you. How many people say it converges? Okay, well, again, the sequence converges, right? The limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n plus 2. What does that equal? 1. So the sequence converges, but it converges to 1, correct? Which means, what's this guy going to add up to? Infinity. Infinity. Yeah. So it diverges. Because the infinityth term is not zero. One is not zero. Diverges by nth term test. Yeah. OK. So hey, it's now time to remind you about geometric. And then, then we're done. And then I'm going to uh, alter your homework to take away the uh, telescoping series problems. Do you not like to do that, or are you just? Do What's you, that? Are you, do you not like that, or are you just going to teach us tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to teach you tomorrow. Yeah, because I, you know, it takes like five minutes or so to teach it, and I've only got exactly five minutes. And frankly, telescoping series are big fun; they're really easy. We'll do it tomorrow. Um, here, geometric series. Okay, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of e over pi to the n power. Tell me, does this converge or diverge? It's a geometric series because each successive term is being multiplied by e over pi. Oh, I forgot one. Bless you. Bless you. Very well. Hey, what do you guys have again? What's that? Converges. Abigail said it converges. How many people? The series or sequence? The series. Okay. What's that? Okay, Abigail says it should converge. How many people agree with her? Well, good for you. Abigail, how'd you know? Because e is also made 2.7, and then pi is 3.7. I mean, 3.14, so 2.7 divided by 3.14 plus 1. Yeah, good for you guys. Good for you, Abigail. That's it. So it converges. And so uh, on your exam, converges, converge, converges converges because it's a geometric series where r is in between 1 and negative 1. So that, that would be why, or if you want to write fewer letters, you would say the absolute value of r is less than 1. Okay, so that's what you would put in the answer column. Remember, it's not enough to just say if something converges. You've got to be prepared to tell me why it converges. And this is a convergence ge geometric series because R is between negative one and positive. All righty.
So um, I think I'm going to leave it here and just remind you, the nth term test for divergence, can that ever tell me if a series converges? No. No way. It only tells me if it diverges. And if it fails, then I'm stuck having to use some other rule, which we're going to learn many more rules in the next couple of days. Alrighty. Hey, good luck, you guys. Yay.